This is an Enermax closed loop liquid coil that we reviewed for Threadripper, and we've gotten a lot of reports recently, just specifically in the last couple of months, that people who bought these are having issues with corrosion or just kind of gross bacteria growing in the loop, which is clearly not supposed to happen. But we reviewed these, and they performed pretty damn well. The Noctua air coolers were highly competitive, but once you noise normalized for 40 dBA or something, the liquid coolers were on top for Threadripper. And they were also the first liquid coolers closed loop available for Threadripper, which made them a compelling buy. But one year later, a lot of reports suddenly have come out of just users facing issues with the loop effectively dying. So today we're going to open up the two that we have and see if it's happened to ours and then try and figure out what we can learn from that. Before that, this video is brought to you by MSI's RTX 2070 Gaming Z 8 gigabyte card. The RTX 2070 Gaming Z uses MSI's dual fan design with large blades, which we've previously tested to have among the best noise normalized thermal results in the class. MSI's 2070 Gaming Z has a fat heat sink, furthering the focus on reduced noise levels by allowing the fans to spin slower. RGB LEDs naturally are abundant on the card, but can be blacked out to match the carbon and blackout shroud. Learn more at the link in the description below. This is the 360 cooler. We also have a 2 something, 240 it looks like. Uh, both are Enermax LickTech TR4 coolers. Enermax came out with a LickTech TR4 II cooler later. Terrible name, but there was a second version later. This is the first version. This is the one that we think is having problems. And obviously this points out a, a potential shortcoming in reviews, which is that we can't really test for longevity when we post a review. So we're revisiting this over a year later at this point, I think, to see how it's done. We're done with the 1650. It's time to open it up. So this is kind of going to suck because there's thermal paste jammed in all of the Torx head uh, screws, but let's get started. Fortunately, from the photos I've seen you all send us on Twitter, it looks like most of the issue can be discovered here. Uh, so I don't think we have to get into the radiator. But my understanding presently is that Enermax has mixed metals, which isn't that abnormal for these, but has also not added a biocide or maybe not enough of it. OK, so we're going to start with these fill caps, because if there's gross stuff in there, I, I want to control emptying it, not empty it all over my hands. And if you want the surface I'm working on, this is the medium mod mat. Underneath it is the large mod mat. So on store.gamersnexus.net, you can pick those up. They are finally uh, just about back in stock at this point, and they'll be shipping out within a couple of days. So that's on store.gamersnexus.net if you want the work surface to protect your table from things like algae and bacterial growth. Uh, or thermal paste is the more the more intended use case. Wow, that's friggin' gross immediately. Uh, that thing right there and that and all that stuff, that was not in this bucket until I emptied part of this. There's not a lot of it yet, but that's super nasty though that that came out. Hey. Okay. Yeah, it smells like a food court at an abandoned mall. Oh, no. <laughs> There's definitely some gunk in there. Wow, that's pretty nasty. Oh, yeah, there you go. Check out the rim where, like, the gasket was. It's not as bad as some of the ones I've seen online. I should note this one hasn't been in use at all since the review. So this is probably, I don't know if that makes it a best case or a worst case, but uh, we do have another one that's been in use more frequently. So yeah, there's just some, it looks like just corrosion discoloration, maybe from the copper that's kind of plated this plastic surface. Uh, so that's kind of not great. And then there's like floating stuff in there. Um, but not a lot of it, not as much as I've seen from some of you online. And the gasket's really nasty, too. Like, that gasket should not look like that at all. Because the next question is, how does the cold blade itself look? And that's got some gross gunk in it, too. 
and you can see corrosion there at the edge. So that is suboptimal. Oh yeah, there's a whole bunch of gunk on this side. It took me a second to see it. So there's a layer of stuff that's just like, the, the, that's significant because it's not a lot of it, but it's all in front of the micro fins and the water flows through these to cool it. So that's not great to see. Still not as bad as some of the ones online. Yep, that's just a nameplate. Okay. There's the impeller. Impeller is actually not bad. There's not really anything in there. Here's a gasket. Uh -oh. Also, not bad. Some dust on it, which shouldn't really happen, but not terrible. Well, so it seems the issue was rather limited on ours, but we do have another one we can look at, I guess. Uh, Okay, so this one's actually been in use. The other one really hasn't been. Uh, so I guess we'll find out with our small sample size if it's worse for it to have been in use or not. The worst of it was was sort of uh, down here on the cold plate, so we'll just take this off straight away this time. Okay. Also kind of gross. Wow, that one's actually a little worse on the top. Can you see that from there? Oh, you know what? This is the one I took apart previously. And what I did with this one was I refilled most of the coolant that came with it. And then whatever I couldn't refill, I topped off with um, EK cryofuel with, and a biocide. So. The fact that this one's got anything in there is it's probably residue from the gasket itself. I wonder if it's the gasket that's deteriorating and then getting colored by the copper or something. But um, this one, if it's in better shape, it's because I was the last one to touch it. Uh, and as you can see by the color of the coolant, I filled it with distilled water and I believe cryofuel and a biocide. So that would explain why this one isn't as bad as the other one. But the residue on top of the cold plate does, does make me think that the gasket is deteriorating and that's what's jamming up the microfins that people are talking about. Okay, so the second one's not so bad. The first one is the worst. And the discoloration on the cold plate that's uh, sort of black and green I want to try and scrub that out and see if it's gunk in there or if it's just discoloration. And this is a Jay's Two Cents tip. Uh, I believe he specifically recommends Crest White, so I can only assume that he's a Crest shell. Oh, we have Colgate. I don't think this is going to work. Uh, so, yeah, toothbrush on the block. And I guess... We'll see uh, if anything comes out of it. So I guess if you ever get those toothbrushes from your dentist and you are a toothbrush elitist and have a better one, you should take them anyway and use them for cleaning liquid cooling parts. Patrick, don't use this to brush your teeth. Well, there's definitely more stuff floating around in the water. So 
So for sure cleaner and some more stuff came out in this bin when we scrubbed it, but ours wasn't that bad compared to a lot of the ones you've sent in. So thanks for the two cents, Jay. Uh, good trick. But I guess that's what you want to, you, you do if you need to clean it. It's not hard to disassemble. You've seen that. Uh, reassembly would be the same process in reverse. You don't need to take the top of the, well, you might want to take this the impeller out, I guess, if yours is really gunked up. But if you've seen thermals uh, decline and get worse over time with this thing, try just taking the, the torque screws out of the cold plate, pull it out, see if it's bad, and you'll just, just refill it with distilled water through the fill port on the side of the block housing. You can refill it with just a funnel and distilled water. And if you want to, you could add some cryofuel, like EK cryofuel mixture in there, or a couple drops of a biocide or something. And that should get you up and running because the 240 that I had taken apart and reassembled previously with distilled water and the biocide I added in, that was mostly fine. And it looked like just residue from the gasket. So anyway, that's what you do if you want to maintain it. As for the issue, we saw a bit of one here, but not nearly as bad as the several that have been sent in to us. And we've gotten probably like 15 of these photos now, which is a lot because most people don't send photos in when they're having issues. So apparently this is a known issue in the community. We didn't have it as bad here, but uh, there is definitely, I don't know, maybe not enough biocide or something like that in their loop. So that's it for this one. Thank you for watching. Hopefully that helps you at least clean it and reassemble it. You just do it in reverse. Subscribe for more. Go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to get behind the scenes videos or store.gamersnexus.net to pick up one of our shirts like this one or one of the mod mats like the one I was working on. I'll see you all next time.